see what I'm trying to say? Okay, so there's, what I'm trying to say is with milk, there's very little transformation. It's just a lot of religion, a lot of religious words. All right, now the seed, the seed that goes into that lamp or goes into you or however you want to put it, it has the capacity to produce a hundredfold. Not by might though, nor by power, but by my spirit. You're not going to do it. That's what Ishmael is about. He produced it in himself. It was easy. He could do it by himself. But when you produce something of God, it is not by might, nor by power, nor but by my spirit. You've got to allow him to do it through you. Okay? Now, Ishmael is going to burn up the wood, hay, and the stubble. I've told you before that the Lord specifically talked to me about Jonah. And it says in the Bible, it says, Jonah fled from the presence of the Lord. It was because he did not do what, want to do what God wanted him to do. Yes. But what I'm telling you is when you get in that presence, he puts his finger on the most painful thing in your life. He says, if you want more of me, you deal with this. Jonah was gone. <laughs> He's like, I ain't dealing with that. And so do we. And sadly, what happens is we get busy. We, we're like, I don't want to deal with that, but I'll go over here and do all this, Lord. I'll, I'll, I'll be the best volunteer at church, and I'll do all these great things. I'll have a Bible study, and I'll do all these great things. And you haven't been called. You've got, to, you've got to sit before the Lord and let Him tell you what He wants you to do. And that's when the journey begins. But most people won't do that. Most people will not allow Him to sit, I mean, to, to put His finger on the most painful thing in your life and say, deal with that. That's when you're starting to grow up. Okay? But what's going to happen is when you go out and you do all these things, that is wood, hay, and stubble. God never told you to do it, and you're not going to get any reward for it. When you get to heaven, the things that you'll be rewarded for are the things that God specifically told you to do. Because everything that you did is going to pass through the fire, and the wood, hay, and the stubble is going to burn slap up. Well, that's Ishmael. Okay? But here's the thing. Whether you grow with milk I mean, whether you're going to drink milk, okay, hold on, let's say it again. When you become a Christian, okay, God requires growth, period, okay? You've got, an, uh, um, God requires growth, and therefore pain is going to come in your life, okay? Now, here's the thing. This came to me. Pain will come to everyone, but you can grow through the pain, or you can go through the pain, but you're going to go through it. It's up to you. But if you look at the Word, the Word says that trials come to steal the Word of God. They come, trials and pain come as a result of the Word. See, if you're in God, God commands you to be eating the Word of God. Okay? So when you start eating the Word of God, knock, 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 here come the trials, here come the pain. You might as well just expect it. But it's growing you. It's time to grow up. Mark 4, 17, when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately they fall away. This is the people who have the rocks in them. So if you are drinking milk, you are subject to every wind of doctrine. You do not know the word. You are tossed to and fro. You are unstable in all your ways because you're double-minded. Until you know the word of God, until you're secure on the word of God, this is where you are. You're a babe. You're easily swayed. But when you eat meat and you start developing, when you start eating meat, you will start developing what's called the mind of Christ. And you become trained to use the word of God. The two-edged sword will allow you to divide between soul and spirit. When, you've, when you're presented with something, you'll be able to look at that thing you know God's ways, you know the Word of God, and you go, this is God, this isn't God. And you won't be fooled anymore. How many times do we get in there and we go, oh, this is God? And it's not. And unfortunately, you find out a year or two later down the road, all your you know, finances were put in this thing, and you, know, you were on board completely, and then you come to another one. Oh, this is God. 
and you're not. You have to be trained in the Word of God. And then the mind of Christ starts being developed in you. The Bible says that there is a whole doctrine in Acts 5. It says that there is a whole doctrine. When you start studying the Word of God, I've told you it's the best way I can describe it, it's like a puzzle piece. When you get a revelation in the Word of God, you get a puzzle piece. Okay? And then you get all these puzzle pieces. Okay? But they don't fit. They're just kind of sitting there going, hmm. And it takes the Holy Spirit at night and meditating on the Word for those pieces to come together. Because what happens is, as you start praying and meditating, He'll give you like an anchor piece. And then those pieces will start sticking together. And then what happens is, if these pieces are connected, then over here, that means this is connected. And you'll start to be able to look at the word. You'll, you'll be able to see situations. I can't tell you how many times I look at situations and I go, because I know the word. But it's going to take, I mean, like me, I can't tell you in the past three years how many messages I've, I've listened to. Some were bones, and I spit them out. But a lot of it was the word of God, and it was being formed, and the mind of Christ was being formed in me. And, I, and it started connecting. The Holy Spirit, when you take that journey with Him, He knows how to guide you into having the mind of Christ. And He'll take you where you need to go to have that develop. So, as you eat the meat, the sword gets sharp. This is what happens. Watch this. And then God turns the sword inward to cut all the junk out of you. <laughs> That's crucifixion. That's what happens. When you sit before the Lord and you say, oh God, I want you, and you start developing what you know is, is truth and error, Whew. you got to cut the Ishmael out. It's, it's got to be done away with. The Bible <coughs> says that he prunes you so you bear more fruit. It has to be cut off. That branch that's not producing any fruit has to be cut off so that you can grow more fruit. Hebrews 5, 12 through 6 through 1. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. That's that passage. The foundational doctrines of Christ. That's like salvation, baptism, all these things that you should be past. That's what he's talking about. Hebrews 5, 12 through 6, 1. So it goes into the next chapter. But it goes on to say, And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Look at that. The people that are in the foundational teachings of God are drinking milk. They have no need of strong meat because they stay right there. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to him that is full age, even those who by reason of use having their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. Now the Bible says that the way that you exercise your senses, your spirit, you've got natural senses, okay? Well, you also have spiritual senses. Y'all aware of that, right? Okay. So, you exercise those senses, and then, like I said, you no longer, your body remains here, but you can actually soar up in there and be seated with Christ in heavenly places, right? Well, the way that works is by praying in the Spirit, by singing songs and spiritual songs and hymns, and, and by prayer, you know, just, in, in just spending time with God, reading the Word, all of that exercises your spiritual senses. So when your senses have been exercised and you're eating the meat, then you can discern between good and evil. That's what it's saying here. Between truth and error. When you come through this, you will carry God's glory. When you come through all the trials, when, when you come through the process of learning the Word of God and eating the meat sharpening the sword, turning the sword inward, cutting all that out with the pain and the trials and all that that you go through, when you come through that, then you will carry God's glory and there will be a promotion. 